James, what are you doing? We have to be in this together. That's gross. No, no, no. This is like a Tesla. It's got the Easter eggs and the and the video games. Oh, I it's see. Like lane change, and then there's sketch. Okay, where's the whoopee cushion one then? More whoopee cushion one. You're watching Throttle House. I'm Thomas. And I'm James. And this might be the most unremarkable EV I've driven all year. And that might be a good thing. Let me explain. Think about the other EV trucks out there right now. You've got the Rivian R1T, which is wonderful, but it's a bit of a California startup experiment. And then there's the Hummer EV, which is a 9,000 pound idiot. We love it as well, but it's really expensive and massive. And then there's the Cybertruck, which only exists in your dreams. They all answer a question that no one was really asking. It doesn't need to be a spaceship. The F-150 Lightning is the first simple down-to-earth EV truck for everyone. It just costs $100,000 Canadian. And launch. Oh, <laughs> that's quick. Nice and smooth off the line though. And 100 kilometers an hour in 4.46 seconds. That's quick. Quite quick, actually. 580 horsepower, 775 pound-feet of torque. It might not be as fast as the Rivian, or it might not be as fast as the Hummer EV, but don't forget, the Ford F-150 Raptor, which costs $110,000, is slower than this. So yeah, it's quick and it's pricey, but the rest of it is just a truck, sort of. And if you're new to Throttle House, we do car reviews, track tests, and quite a lot of messing about. So subscribe, hit the bell. If you just took a quick glance, you might think that this is just an F-150 Lariat. It's a body-on-frame four-wheel drive pickup with a generous towing capacity, good payload, and can even go 482 kilometers on a full tank of electrons. But dig deeper and there's a hole where the engine would be, which coincidentally is about the same size as the hole in our hearts was when we realized that despite our excitement, it wouldn't work as a utility vehicle for our team. We bought a Ram because we need to tow a trailer that we use for filming, and in that trailer occasionally goes a race car that we take to the track. If I chose this to do those duties, I would get precisely not all the way to any of the destinations that I usually take the race car to. So that's a bit of an issue. Some outlets have found that when you tow something with this, the range goes right down. Like, it could tow 10,000 pounds, but James can probably bench press 105 pounds once with help. It doesn't count unless you can do it for a long time. So, points off there. A lot of points, actually. A lot of truck points. In fact, that's not the only normal F-150 thing it's lacking. But in this other case, that's not a bad thing. What I mean by that is that the F-150 Lightning is not a harsh experience. For example, when we were shopping for a truck for ourselves to drive to different filming locations or for me to tow the race car, I realized that I wanted something that was the antithesis to my unair conditioned classic cars and my race car itself. So it needed to be comfortable and insulated. And when we tested the F-150, it was too harsh and jiggly and loud. And the Ram was this air suspension cushioned dream. This F-150 Lightning is a lot more Ram than it is F-150. And that's not because it has air suspension like the Ram, it's because it has independent rear suspension, which is a deviation from a normal F-150, which just has a live rear axle in the back, and leaf springs. And that was one of the things we were most excited for with this vehicle because this now rides nicely. There's still truck motions, 
but there isn't that judder, that shudder, that, that, that punishment that you feel every time you hit a bump or an uneven piece of road. It's smooth. And a part of that is that there is no engine vibrations either. It's just that EV motor, just wind noise coming through. And even though it is rapid, still feels familiar. The Rivian R1T, which is admittedly a smaller vehicle, I think even heavier, felt more agile in the California canyons. This, even now on Ontario roads, I don't feel compelled to throw it through the corners. It's still a big F-150. A part of that is the steering. The Rivian communicated the road through the wheel a lot better than this, but I do feel more control than we did in that F-150 power boost. In terms of livability and just daily driving, the electric powertrain is, is just a beautiful thing. We've always said when it comes to luxury and utility, it's gonna really translate well, and it does in this. It's not completely perfect. When I'm driving at low speeds like this and I just go on throttle and come off the throttle, there's a little funk either side. It's not completely smooth. We experienced that in the Marquee GT as well, actually. But just the benefits, I mean, that torque curve, it's not a torque curve, it's a, it's a torque table. It's just immediately, beautifully there. 775 pound feet. Is it a driving weapon? No. Is it the best driving full-size truck I've ever driven? Yes. Pretty right. good. It's good. It is good. It's good. The best part about it though is that it looks like a truck. It does. It looks exactly like an F-150. You can't really tell. And Ford are good at that. Are they? Did that on purpose. Yeah, yeah. yeah when yeah. they turn something to an electric car, yeah. it, they match. Like, think about the Mustang. Yeah. An electric Mustang. It looks exactly like... Doesn't, does it? Doesn't, no. no. But doesn't this tell. does. Yes, you can turn up to a job site in this and they're not gonna go like, hey, nice truck, buddy. They're gonna go, ooh, the what, lightning. What bullies are you working with? Well, you worked at a job site. Lightning logo is pretty cool. What do you Lightning, think about that? It's very cool. It's very cool. I like with the blue. I think I'd like it to be on the back though, so that people know I've got the cool lightning, you know? No, it's a sleeper. That's a whole, it's quicker than a Raptor, as you said. It's supposed to be. It is quicker than a Raptor. It also has the biggest rear control arms I've ever seen in the world. I was, yeah, I was going to say that. Yeah. <laughs> I just thought, I, I, I saw really, them earlier they, and I had to point them out. The, the bed is not so different to a normal line. In fact, it's so much of it's the same that you can use all the accessories on a normal F-150. Yes, so. and this has a, a 9.6 kilowatt generator built in, right? Which Ford say, Ford say, can power your house for three days. I would like to test that. That's probably your fridge and a lamp. Oh. I never worked at a job site. Oh. Felt so good. Now what do I do? Um, and now I, yeah, you load things. Oh, okay. So the Rivian, is a little bit more ingenious in the way that it does storage. It's got the gear tunnel thing, right? This is literally just a body on frame truck with a flatbed. Yeah, the, which, the Rivian's a Swiss cheese. It's got holes everywhere. It's just got holes in it, right? And then the Hummer EV is like, I don't, we, we shouldn't even keep bringing the Hummer EV up because it's so different to this. Yeah. That's like a massive, ridiculous thing. But this is... they all have frunks, which in trucks is a, quite a wonderful thing because otherwise there's not really a secure place to store your stuff. Yeah, push that. You can push open this with the key as well. And it's the, really the speedy. There it goes. There we go. Yeah. Bunch of storage. There's some more plugs up here. Yeah, we've got the cooler with the, with the drain that we, as we discovered. Oh, oh, oh hey, it stays like that. That was on purpose, yeah. Yeah, I didn't, um, that, that's neat. And that, as, we, as we found out, you can put ice cubes in there. Yep, yeah. uh, we, did, we did that before. Yeah. And then you can close it with this button here. Watch your hands. Will it cut me? Oh, that's bold. God, you're It's brave. pretty slow, though. <laughs> yeah, it is pretty slow. <laughs> it sound healthy. It sounds like a, like a spaceship docking at a station or like a whoopee cushion button something that this truck doesn't have. No, it doesn't. But what it does have is it hasn't reinvented the world, right? The Silverado that's coming. Yeah. People are complaining that looks like the Avalanche, even though it's a built from ground up truck. Yes, this is very normal on the outside and the inside. Yeah. All right, get in. All right. No tooting. All right. Okay. F-150. It's an F-150. Okay, anyway. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah. Slight, <laughs> slight, slight differences. Yeah. So. The, this has a 12 inch screen if you get the lower trims, but because this is the Lariat. Yes, yeah, so this gets like the mock This gets the 15 inch thing screen. with the thing. Yeah. And as we discovered, it does have games. Yes. You're on sketch here. And you can sketch things, anything. The temptation. Don't do it. To not draw. I, is it a thing in Canada? In England, every schoolboy draws willies everywhere. Everywhere. Sounds like a problem. It. Did you all need to see it's somebody? It's more of a tradition. <laughs> I guess then you don't. Okay. Um, 
But yeah, but it's, this is pretty easy to use. You've got CarPlay, beautiful, and then go back to normal Ford stuff. Yep, and then here you can access the drive modes, and then it has all the towing stuff, because this has the towing uh, stuff optioned, right? Um, it, it's the exact same as, like, you can, you can add a certain type of trailer, what type of trailer brake it has, the lights and all of that stuff, and it has an actual trailer brake controller, which is really nice. And it shows yeah. you, because the payload in this, I think on the extended range battery is 1,800 pounds, and it's 2,000 pounds in the standard battery. Yeah. And then when you, as you put stuff in the trunk and the, the uh, bed, yeah. it shows how much weight, how much it weighs it, and then shows digitally how much it weighs and how much of the payload you're up to. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, no, they, they, did, they went full on. It, it's all of the, the, the possible truck-related towing and, and, and hauling things that you'd need. Um, it's a lot of work for 90 miles of range. It's, well, we, we haven't tested it, but people have. People have, and yes, the range suffers massively Drops. with towing. No, um, no EV truck has been able to beat the rain, towing range issue. No, it, no, it probably will happen, but it's not going to be for a while. Can, there are a lot of outlets in this car. Lots of outlets. Like, a lot of them. Yeah. They're everywhere. You How much power? stuff do you need to plug it's in, got power. Really? It's got power. It's got the easy-to-use dash, which yep. you can configure. So if I go configure my view, I can have a calm screen. Oh, the screen. calm screen. Yeah, but then there's also pinch and roll. Pinch and roll has got to be there. Power distribution. Yeah. You, yeah. You're basically adding or removing individual screens. We've always liked this gauge cluster. We've always liked the infotainment that Ford does. I don't have any issues with, with this interior at all. And, and I've pointed this out before. I'm going to point it out again. I think this is a really like under-discussed topic of design when it comes to trucks. In our RAM... These side sills don't come down like this. So the mirror is up higher and it's a massive blind spot. Like going into roundabouts, I cannot see what's coming. Right. The other day, I almost hit a Porsche that was chalk, chalk, chalk. Yeah, because it blended in with the road and there was a blind spot and I almost hit it because I couldn't see it because of my mirror. And had I have had an F 150, he could have enjoyed his chalk car and I wouldn't have almost but murdered the, him. But the key is you didn't hit him. Yeah. Yeah. With my race car reflexes. Is it a hundred grand in here? <laughs> um, no. No, not really. But you're not really this is like That's just not, a small yeah. part. It's not what you're paying right? for. Right? Yeah, 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 exactly. The whole true to being an F one fifty thing, they've ridden that all the way yep. into the interior. No, back seat's very spacious, typical thing. Nothing really to talk about there. Has all the same stuff. This little gear lever here, you put that down and it sounds like it's gonna last forever. We said fifty tries. Yeah. <laughs> I just ate lunch on this only moments ago. It's actually quite smooth. Yeah, I had too many noodles and I don't feel good. Um, <clears throat> should we do a conclusion? Yeah. Okay. So, the Achilles heel of the F-150 Lightning is the long distance towing. But, failing to tow for long distances is not unique to the Lightning as far as EV trucks go. Until some huge technological advancement happens, they're all guilty. So, that aside, the Lightning feels to us like a massive success. It's supple ride, easy to access power, extra storage over the petrol version, and familiar looks make for a compelling package. The charging speed doesn't change the game, and the incoming Silverado EV promises more range. But until something new actually hits the road, the Lightning is the only true, no-nonsense EV truck that can be serviced at your dealer down the road. Thanks for watching.